So next, uh, uh, so that is basically the motivation for uh, building happy VPNs. Now let us look at uh, some of uh, what VPN and its properties uh, are. Um, what is the definition of a, a VPN? So a VPN is nothing but a private network service built on a service provider shared infrastructure. Uh, what is the virtual part of this? It just means that uh, it appears to be a separate physical network to the customer, but actually it is sharing the uh, hardware resources of the service uh, provider. Uh, then what exactly private uh, means? Each uh, VPN customer maintains uh, its own routing information. Uh, the VPN customers uh, are not even aware that there are a lot of other customers who are leveraging the same uh, uh, service provider uh, resources. So they feel that they are on a private uh, network. So that's basically the definition of a, um, a VPN. Uh, and uh, as we uh, talked about, the key drivers are the cost effectiveness, the flexibility, and the simplification. Uh, and uh, VPNs, as we'll uh, see in the next few slides, they can be built uh, at uh, layer 2 as well as uh, uh, layer 3. We'll see the pros and cons of both these approaches. So what are some of the key features of v uh, uh, VPNs? Uh, let us look at it uh, from the viewpoint of uh, uh, a customer who is buying VPNs from a service uh, uh, provider. Basically, what he wants is one routing domain per uh, uh, VPN, and uh, he should be able to use uh, any routing uh, uh, protocol. If the customer is always using OSPF, he would prefer to continue to use that. If he's using RIP, he wants to continue to use that. Uh, things like that, right? If he's using uh, uh, EBGP, he wants to continue to uh, uh, use that. He cannot change the kind of network that he has just because he wants to buy the VPN service from the service uh, provider. So you need to retain uh, all that. Uh, and then uh, the customer would uh, want the flexibility of using uh, his own uh, route maps for uh, transferring routes from one place to another. He wants to build uh, internet and extranet kind of uh, uh, services. Uh, and a typical example of this would be that you know uh, you, you can go to uh, any company's uh, website uh, and you will see only the, that information that is really consumable by the public, not uh, any uh, uh, something which is proprietary to the company. What, what some information that you should not be uh, able to see. Uh, and the uh, VPN customer also wants to have firewall uh, capabilities in the sense uh, he wants to be able to control what kind of traffic. Uh, comes uh, into his network and things like that. And uh, uh, it's also uh, that uh, VPN customers want to reuse some of their uh, existing IP uh, addresses. Uh, if there are different uh, VPN customers, uh, the service provider can build a network in such a way that both the customers can continue to use the same IP uh, address, it won't affect anything. We'll see how that uh, um, uh, MP, MPLS IP technology uh, helps achieve this particular thing. Then the most important thing is uh, security, where it should not be possible for one VPN to access the resources of another um, uh, VPN. This is uh, one of the most important things that uh, uh, all VPN customers uh, look for. Uh, and then another key feature is that the C routers need not be routing peers. I mean, this is uh, mostly uh, applicable in the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, model. And uh, the VPN customers also want the flexibility of uh, having their own kind of um, uh, QoS depending on the requirements. Like for example, if uh, uh, a company uh, wants to connect the head office to its branch office, it might want a different kind of QoS versus a bank which might want to do some wire transfer to some of its branch offices. Uh, so the kind of requirements for QoS are um, different. And uh, here uh, we notice that the layer 1 and layer 2 resources are known and administered by the service uh, provider. So what are the different uh, models of IPVPN that a service provider can um, adopt uh, to provide these kind of uh, uh, services? So typically there are uh, two models. Uh, one is the overlay model uh, wherein uh, the service provider uh, provides only emulated lease lines to the customer. And the second model is called as a peer-to-peer -peer model, wherein the service provider and customer exchange military routing information, and the provider relays the data between the customer sites on optimum path without the uh, customer's in, uh, involvement. At a high level, uh, let me uh, tell you what the uh, differences um, uh, are. 
in the overtime uh, model, basically the service provider is saying that, hey, here, take on um, uh, the uh, lease It could be an ATM server, it could be a premium layer, uh, or whatever that might be. He's providing uh, uh, a layer two services, and uh, he's going to map that onto his MPLS uh, in within his network. Uh, and uh, all the routing problems are basically the concerns of the VPN customer. So a lot of customers uh, um, prefer that. Now there is, uh, in the peer-to-peer -peer model, what happens is the customer will say, hey, look, I, I just want to be able to deal with problems uh, on my direct connection to the service provider, and it's your responsibility to connect me to my remote sites. So basically, the routing problems are the problems of the service provider now, and it's not the um, customer. Now, both these approaches have uh, its pros and cons, and uh, let's see um, uh, what they are. So in the overlay model, as I said, there is a clear separation between the customer and the service provider's responsibilities. The service provider uh, provides the customer with emulated lease lines called uh, virtual circuits. Uh, in this particular case, the service provider has no knowledge of the customer network because all he's concerned is, I'm going to provide you a lease line and I'm going to charge you for uh, the amount of um, uh, usage. And it is the job of the customer to establish, uh, see uh, its communication to all the remote uh, sites over these particular emulated uh, 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 circuits. Um, and the routing protocol data is exchanged between the customer devices. As I said, the service provider has no knowledge of how the customer has built the network, how many routes he is uh, uh, using and things like that. So the billing is purely based on the uh, lease line that uh, he has provided to the customer. Uh, in this particular case, it is hard for the service provider to provide multiple classes of QoS because it cannot differentiate the traffic in the middle of the network. Uh, one thing we have to be uh, careful here is uh, in understanding this particular scenario is that the service provider is providing the service to multiple um, uh, customers. So since he's not aware of the kind of uh, traffic, he'll not be able to optimize his uh, network. Right? So that's the mo most important uh, uh, thing to keep in mind. So uh, how does this work? So this uh, uh, picture here on the slide uh, is a nice uh, demonstration of uh, how this particular feature uh, works. So here, if you see, there are different layer two uh, VCs, which are uh, going to each of the different customers. Uh, there's a pink line, there's a black line, there's a brown line. They're all going to three different uh, um, uh, customers from the edge router. So that's the service that the service provider is going to give to the uh, customers, and he's going to charge them based on the usage uh, basis. Uh, and uh, what you see in the circle in the blue is nothing but the service provider uh, network. And uh, this is MPLS uh, based. So the service provider is going to build uh, tunnels um, from uh, uh, each of the edge nodes to all the other um, uh, edge nodes. So in this case, it is from P on the left to the P to the uh, right. So you can see that the tunnel is uh, represented uh, in uh, green. Now, how does he provide the uh, connectivity for the different um, customers? You can see that the uh, pink uh, circuit is mapped all the way from one end, uh, from ingress P to the egress uh, uh, P through this tu tunnel. The same thing with the black uh, circuit as well, as well as with the brown brown circuit. So uh, a representation of that, uh, if you want to, if you want to see, if you see below, the tunnel label is nothing but the big pipe, and it is going to carry the services of each of the uh, customers in different uh, colors. So uh, uh, within the tunnel, you are going to provide uh, services to each of the different uh, customers, ensuring that there is no uh, interaction uh, amongst the uh, VPN um, uh, traffic. And you can also charge them based on the QoS provided by the uh, tunnel. So this is typically how uh, a layer 2 VPN services uh, are provided to customers by the service uh, provider. Uh, another uh, illustration of the same, uh, same thing uh, is uh, if you are getting, if you are providing a service to the uh, customer, uh, you can see that the packets are coming from the C to the uh, uh, P, and uh, the editor services get mapped onto the LSP. LSP is nothing but a label switch path which the MPLS code allows you to uh, build. So uh, you can see that uh, uh, label switched uh, path is uh, built there. 
and different packets belonging to different customers are going uh, uh, through that all the way to the egress uh, 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 edge, rou edge router where uh, a legacy L2 frame is preserved all the way to, uh, through the tunnel and from there you know who, uh, who are the uh, HC nodes to which you have to transport the service to. Okay. Uh, if you have followed the uh, MPLS uh, forum, you'll notice that uh, uh, Martini was one of the authors uh, for providing this uh, model of uh, layer 2 uh, service, wherein all services look like a virtual service to the MPLS network, and the uh, provision service is associating each endpoint with a common uh, VC ID. And uh, networks automatically determines the VC label and the tunnel label to push on an L2 frame. So basically you have one bigger uh, L2 uh, uh, LSP tunnel within which there are multiple small uh, tunnels, each one representing a different VPN uh, um, customer. Uh, why would the companies uh, deploy this kind of uh, uh, topology? Uh, typically when they have to build a hub and spoke kind of a uh, topology wherein uh, if a remote site stock only to a central site. It is possible that uh, uh, you know a lot of companies with head office in one place, branch office in uh, other places, they want this kind of a model wherein everybody talks only to the um, uh, head office. So this is uh, an easy way to uh, deploy this kind of a service. Then there is a partial or full mesh topology wherein you want every site to be able to talk to every other site uh, directly rather than going through one central site. So uh, in which case you can prefer to build a full mesh uh, topology. And then there are situations wherein you might want a combination of these two, uh, which is the hybrid uh, topology, uh, wherein uh, you might have uh, your uh, all the sites uh, uh, into three different categories. One is the access networks, wherein you want everybody to talk to everybody else but only within uh, the selected access networks and then you can aggregate from there onto a distribution uh, and then onto a, uh, a core. So um, uh, this is uh, useful when you want to reduce the amount of uh, control traffic. So this is another topology wherein they might prefer to go for this um, uh, layer 2 VPN uh, services. Now the second uh, way they can deploy a VPN, uh, sorry, uh, let's talk of some of the problems of this uh, uh, overlay uh, model. So this is well suited for non-redundant configurations with a few central sites and many remote sites, but it becomes extremely hard to manage in a more meshed configuration. Uh, if you notice that most uh, uh, service, uh, service provider customers uh, they are always looking for uh, redundant configurations in case there is a problem with uh, one circuit they want all the uh, data to go on a, a different uh, circuit. So in such situations to build a complex topology uh, of uh, and mapping all their emulated circuits onto LSPs becomes a huge problem. And you need to be able to do proper provisioning of the VC capacities. You should have a detailed knowledge of the site to site traffic profiles which are usually not readily available. Uh, if implemented using layer 2 technology, it is quite complex to migrate to IP based uh, networks and the routing also is complex because uh, you have put all the burden onto the uh, customer. So these problems are something similar to uh, where you had only um, uh, ATM network or frame rail network except that here you have converged them all onto just one uh, MPLS uh, network. So it is uh, not so bad because the service provider is using only one MPLS uh, uh, network. Uh, however, it is still a problem uh, when you have to take care of uh, uh, routing. But then, uh, not to say that this is uh, this should not be deployed. A lot of customers uh, prefer uh, this kind of uh, deployments uh, for the way their company is. So this should be fine. So next, let us look at the peer to uh, peer uh, model. So in this case, uh, typically the uh, customers uh, do not want to bother about uh, the inter-site connectivity. Uh, if we are uh, uh, talking of uh, a company like, let's say, uh, Reliance, uh, they will have an office in pretty much uh, every single uh, city in, uh, in India. So uh, it will be difficult for them to uh, kind of build di direct communication with all the remote offices. Instead, they are better off taking the service of one service provider who can connect them to all the remote offices. 
So in this case what happens is the uh, edge directly exchanges routing information with the customer edge router and the service provider routers exchange customer routes through the core uh, uh, network. The customer can outsource the routing to the service provider thus saving cost. Which means here uh, uh, the concern of the customer is just talking to the service provider and it is the job of the service provider to build connectivity to all the remote uh, uh, sites. So it is a significant cost savings for the customer because uh, he has to only worry about one link which is directly talking to the service provider. He doesn't have to worry about talking to the uh, remote uh, sites. That problem uh, and burden becomes that of the service uh, provider. So a, a typical example uh, when uh, customers would prefer this is when they want to build an uh, extranet kind of a, a topology wherein you want uh, two different organizations uh, exchanging uh, common uh, data or you can build central services extranet where for linking multiple organizations with similar um, uh, in, uh, interest. So uh, extranets become a lot more uh, centralized or you can also use it to build um, uh, intranet. Uh, you can see that uh, there are, are uh, multiple advantages if you go for the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, model uh, wherein the routing is very simple because the customer is uh, only concerned about exchanging the routing information with one or a few P routers. If you want redundancy then you might want uh, to uh, peer with two P routers. Right? And the routing between customer sites is always optimal as the provider routers uh, know the customer network topology and can thus establish optimum inter-site routing. Basically what this uh, means uh, is that the service provider has good knowledge uh, about the kind of routing traffic uh, within his uh, network because uh, it is his job to provide the uh, inter-site uh, community. So he can come up with all kinds of optimizations within his uh, network to best leverage the resources that he has. The bandwidth provisioning becomes uh, simpler because the customer has to specify only the inbound and outbound bandwidths for each site and not the exact site to site traffic uh, uh, profile. So this is uh, <coughs> uh, a huge uh, uh, thing in terms of uh, cost uh, for the service uh, uh, provider because he's, he clearly knows what is the kind of in, uh, inbound and outbound bandwidth that each site uh, uh, needs. And then addition of new site is uh, simpler because say well, a company buys, uh, company A buys another company B. Now all uh, they have to do is make sure that they are talking to the same service provider. Uh, that's all they need to uh, uh, worry about. It, is the, it will be the job of the service provider to build connectivity across uh, uh, these two. So there again uh, it's a significant uh, cost advantage for both the customers as well as for the uh, service providers. Uh, so that is uh, at a high level about the different uh, models. Now let us get into some of the uh, technical details of how uh, MPLS VPN architecture is implemented uh, in these uh, service provider uh, uh, routers. So at a high level we should be aware of uh, some building uh, blocks as such. Uh, we have already talked about this. Uh, generally CE represents the customer um, edge. Uh, PE represents the provider edge. P is nothing but the provider core router uh, and then uh, it is possible that uh, <coughs> you are taking service uh, from two different uh, uh, service uh, providers. Um, uh, as you can see in this particular uh, slide, there is a corporation uh, A uh, which has three different uh, sites. It is possible that uh, these sites are in different countries altogether, in which case you will have to take the service from multiple service providers to build uh, connectivity across uh, your sites. So uh, uh, just to simplify the understanding of how MPLS and PVPNs uh, uh, work, uh, we'll assume that uh, there is only one service uh, provider uh, cloud. Um, and uh, this particular uh, slide demonstrates uh, how uh, you can build connectivity 